Hell no, nah, I don't want to give you what I had to stay up and work for while you was in the bed sleep. Like, no, I don't feel sorry for you. No, you decided to place yourself wherever you want to be in this world and you got to live with that and you and God deal with that. If I just feel nice and I want to just bless you, okay, cool, I will. But I don't feel no type of obligation to, to give nobody nothing who ain't putting in that work like me. And that's around the board. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel sorry for nobody who ain't putting in that work like me. If you ain't in that with me putting in that work, I don't feel sorry for you. Wherever you land in this world, it's the hood, the home, whatever it is. You had the chance to work hard. You didn't. So you live where you live. You live like you live. And that's what your life is. Because you thought losing was, was cool. Slim Thug, not just a rapper, he's a businessman and entrepreneur. And his new investment is shining a light on older neighborhoods. Janelle Ford shows us how he is standing for Houston. He's one of the first faces that comes to mind when you think of Houston rappers. But under the radar, Slim Thug is making a mark in the city Thank God I made it out the trap. that extends beyond the music scene. I put 500 into It's a quest thing. being taken on by rappers across the nation, buying back the blocks where they grew up and reinvesting in them. A movement recently thrown into the spotlight after LA rapper Nipsey Hussle was slain in front of his South Central store. I've seen people raise the question, well, who, who's Houston's Nipsey? And uh, I've seen a few people mention my name. Quietly, Slim has been buying up properties in his old stumping grounds of Acres Homes. Yeah, the rock driveway. And he's doing so with some of his longtime friends. There's Troy Green, Corey Crawford, and LaShawn West. Together, they make up Boss Life Construction. This world is mine. The goal was to just ba actually get into the real estate business um, for the most part is how it initially started. Their plan to rebuild this community had humble beginnings. We started out in the tax auction buying properties and we noticed that there was a lot of people buying from our community that wasn't from now or never been there. So they decided to try their hands at it themselves. The friends say it was harder than expected. We just kind of formulated and jumped out on faith not knowing real estate, learning as we go on our own. In 2016, they completed their first block, transforming this into this. We gave it that kind of heights feel, you know. This is Conklin block. We came through and we built seven homes. Things began to take off from there. At the centralized point of development, Burns Barbecue, co-owned by Crawford, we plan to capitalize off the foot traffic. We want to try to develop this this whole block, this whole neighborhood, build more commercial restaurants around our commercial businesses. So when people from all over the country come in and see it. In between rebuilding homes in the area like this one. We're buying older homes or foreclosed homes and we're remodeling them to make them look better and bringing them more up to date. They've also just put a handful of new townhomes on the market. This right here is just luxury living in Acres Home. But when they see us long term and down the road, they'll say, hey, these guys came into this community and developed this community when a lot of people didn't want to do it, didn't want to touch it, thought it was like just the, the, the hood. And the friends hope that what they're doing inspires others. Everything that's cool for rappers is bad investments, cars, all that stuff. I'm just trying to encourage the youngsters to get involved with other things. Way to go, Slim Thug. Yeah, that was uh, pretty neat. And he, he said it, he goes, look, people are investing in the wrong things, invest in a home. Yeah. I love The deal, like we're having the Laura lot, we got those from the city, you know, like, you know, it was like I say, abandoned lot, abandoned property, like, and they was just together. So, uh, like a vacant lot, vacant lot, trash on it, maybe trees, nobody ain't, you know, doing that. So we just found uh, a block that was, you know, uh, uh, some lots together because we was like, what can we, what we just was trying to do something to make it make sense for them giving me my day or whatever. So. We came up with the boss life construction. We built that whole block. It's like 10 houses, uh, five on each side, and they was our low income homes. So it wasn't like we hit a bankroll on them yeah. like that. But that's the deal though. To build on a lower lot, it had to be a low income home. So you own you own the properties and then you just rent them out? No, we gave, we sold them. Oh, you sold them? Yeah, we sold, sold them. them, yeah. So do you, do you know the people that you sold them to? We met them, we met a couple of them. Uh, it was one lady who worked at the library out there. We meet them, we go over there and holler at them every How would, I'm sure they were appreciative. Yeah, yeah. We, not only that, we gave away a house for Hurricane Harvey. 
Yeah. Uh, with Justin Deloy, we got with him and gave away a home. We fixed it up and just gave it away to a family, you know, who uh, lost their house in Hurricane Harvey. So the real estate stuff we was doing initially was just like on some give back type stuff. Now, my friend Troy Green and Corey um, Crawford, he they really get taking it to the next level. They keeping, like I say, you got the um, townhomes and everything. So they still got the boss life construction going.